Welcome to my new series on Hilt, which is a tool built on top of Dagger for dependency injection on Android. In this video, I am going to get started setting up Dilt, uh, sorry, Hilt in Android Studio. We're gonna go to the website, uh, check out the documentation. We're gonna go to the Android developer website, check out the documentation, and basically just get started. We're gonna build a project, and I'm gonna take you through everything you need to get started using Hilt. And this is the first video in a series. There's probably gonna be, you know, I would think, nine to 13 ish videos. Um, I'm going to take you from all the way from like absolute sort of bare bones, how to get started using Hilt all the way up to like the more advanced concepts, which is like using in view models, different types of, uh, injection, uh, doing tests or running, uh, doing dependency injection and tests, how Hilt makes testing easier on Android, all those kind of things. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, I'm not going to talk too much more about it. Let's just get started and, uh, open up Android Studio. Okay, so I know I said we we're gonna start in Android Studio, but let's actually start on the Hilt website. So if we go to dagger.dev, this is just standard Dagger website, there's a new section up here called Hilt. And this is where it tells you all about Hilt and like why they built Hilt. So from the first paragraph here, it says, Hilt provides a standard way to incorporate Dagger dependency injection into an Android application. The goals of Hilt are to simplify Dagger related infrastructure for Android apps, to create a standard set of components and scopes to ease setup, read, uh, ease setup, readability, understanding, and code sharing between apps, to provide an easy way to provision different bindings to various build types, uh, testing, debug, or release. So basically, the aim here is they're they're making they're trying to make Dagger easier for Android developers. This is sort of like what they tried to do with Dagger Android, but in my opinion, Dagger Android I would call Dagger Android a failure. This was definitely not a failure. This actually does make things easier for Android developers. So um, we don't really need to spend any more time in the Hilt documentation. We can actually go to the Android documentation, go to the kind of best practices section here, go to dependency injection, and go to dependency injection with Hilt. And here's the link up at the top here. So what I'm gonna be doing is just kind of going through this and we're gonna be setting up Hilt in a brand new Android project. So first things first, we of course need to get our dependencies so I can copy this. And this is actually for the build.gradle uh, project file. So we need to, need to add the Hilt Android Gradle plugin. So here I have a brand new project. All I did was you know go to new project. I created a empty activity, went to next, gave it a name and clicked finish. That is literally all that I've done here. Nothing is different. So once you've created a brand new project, let's get started here. So let's go into build.gradle. I'm gonna paste that class path in here and I can get that Dagger Hilt uh, Gradle plugin. Now I'm gonna go back to the documentation and it's gonna tell me what else I need. So then apply the Gradle plugin and add these dependencies to your app build.gradle file. So we're gonna grab these two plugins, gonna go to the app level build.gradle file. So build.gradle up here and uh, paste these two, oh, whoops, sorry, paste those two plugins at the top. So caps for the annotations, Kotlin annotation um, thing that you need to use annotations with Kotlin with capped, and then Dagger Hilt Android plugin. Going back, now let's grab these two dependencies. So the first one is of course to use uh, Hilt, and then the second one is to use the annotation processor, and that's why we have capped up the front here. So let's sync that. There's still some more stuff we need to add, but I'll sync that and just see if it gives me any complaints. Um, I thought you actually had to use Maven Central here, but maybe I'm wrong. It didn't it didn't give me any warning, so I'll just leave it the way it is. Um, next, you need to, Hilt uses Java 8, so we need to enable Java 8. So this also goes into the build.gradle app file. So copying both of those, going into the build.gradle app file, pasting those in, and we need something else too. Um, so if I go over to my notes that I have here, we also are gonna use this uh, Kotlin options thing and add this to our build.gradle file. So paste that in. So JVM target, we're telling it that we're using Java 8. I can't remember if you can get away with not using it. I had it in my notes, so I'm just gonna make sure that I add it. I don't wanna forget something. All right, so next going back to the documentation again, that was not the documentation, this is the documentation. Uh, so now it gets into how to get started with it. So that should be all the dependencies that we need. But again, I'm going to double check my notes just to make sure. It says here I, I wanted myself, I wanted to remind myself to grab the retrofit dependency. So we don't, we're not actually going to be using retrofit until way later in this video series. But I'm going to be using it for kind of example purposes. So make sure to copy the retrofit dependency. If you don't know what retrofit is, well, I'm assuming most of you do know what retrofit is. It's just uh, it's an HTTP live library for Android. You can do HTTP requests. It's kind of the most popular one for doing HTTP requests. I'm going to be using it later to actually do HTTP requests, but in these first 
kind of videos, it's going to be just for examples and you'll, you'll see more about that later. So just copying that, pasting that in, and I'm actually going to copy this too and get the, uh, extract out the version from Hilt and paste over this. So this is exactly the same as what was just there. The only difference here is I took the version out and I passed it as a variable here. That's the only difference. Uh, and then the last thing here is I have this, uh, correct error types. I can't remember what this is for. This is something to do with Hilt. I can't remember. It's going to come to me at some point when I'm explaining this later to you, but I'm just going to add it for now. And let's hit sync. And that is it for our dependencies. Okay. So next to get started using Hilt, I'm just following along the documentation here. It says all apps that use Hilt must contain an application class that is annotated with Hilt Android app. So I'm going to, I'm going to come on camera here and explain this to you uh, really quick. So we know that, uh, all of you guys who are used to using dagger, you know, that you, you needed a custom application class before you needed to, um, if you're using dagger Android, you had to extend it by a certain thing, but basically what the application component was for was for holding a reference to your app component. Back when we used dagger or dagger Android, we had to have this thing called an app component, which was, um, like a, I guess like a mechanism for keeping a reference to something that holds dependencies that will live for the lifetime of the application. So things that no matter what, as long as the app is alive, those dependencies would be alive. So Hilt has simplified this greatly. So now all we need to do, which you'll see in just a second here, is we need to just add a single annotation to the application class and we're good. So that that's kind of the first thing that I want you to know about Hilt is it does, um, like all the components that you used to build before the app component, or if you had any sub components, any components at all, Hilt automatically generates them. And then you install the dependencies into those generated components. Now that sounds com confusing, but actually you don't have to do anything. All you need to do is declare the dependencies and say, install it into this component and then it's good to go. So those of you who are confused about what I just said, which is probably most of you, don't worry, we're gonna be looking at examples and I'm gonna revisit this idea later. Just know that the, the application class is greatly simplified, which you'll see in just a second here. Okay, so let's go back to Android Studio. We're gonna create that application class. So right clicking on the main package directory and it's just gonna call this like my application. You can call it whatever you want. It's gonna be a class. Yes, sure, let's add that to Git. Uh, and this is going to extend application. So just like standard, if you were building a custom application class on Android, you would extend it by application. Notice I'm not extending it by anything that has anything to do with, with Android. Uh, now, if I look at the documentation, it tells me that I want to annotate this with at Hilt Android app. So that's what I'm going to do. So annotate this with at Android. Uh, Hilt, whoops, at Hilt Android app. And this is giving me a warning telling me that I need to declare this in the manifest. So I'm going to go do that, go into the manifest, type the name parameter and just reference my application. Now, when I build this, so if I just go to uh, build and rebuild the project, what, what Hilt is going to do is it's going to generate that app component and kind of prepare everything we need to, to uh, use Hilt in our application. So I just want to, I want to point out like the specific savings here. Like what, what did we actually tangibly save here compared to what Dagger was like before? Well, before we had to build the application class for sure. Um, we, but we had to build also the app component. We had to build modules for the, for the component, which we haven't built any modules yet, but don't worry, we're going to get to that. We had to use either the builder or the factory pattern, but we had to build that component. Then we saved a reference to the component inside of the application class. Um, then we would have to rebuild the project because that app, that component would, the dagger app component would not be generated yet. So we need to generate it. Then we needed to go back into our application class and initialize it because now we have it, uh, generated from dagger. So it's like, there's a lot of steps there, right? And, and it gets more complex too, as you get more components, different scopes, different modules. There's a lot of things extra that you need to do there. Notice that we did one, we added one line of code there, one annotation. We have the app component. It's uh, coupled with the application. We didn't have to instantiate it. We didn't have to do anything. It's just ready to like use. So my, there's a lot of savings there. I just wanted to make sure I pointed that out. Okay. So that's going to be it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to, I'm just looking at my notes here. We're going to go through some uh, field injection. So what is field injection? And we're going to just kind of build from the ground up, like what is dependency injection? How would we use it? How do we declare dependencies? How do we inject them? All that kind of stuff from the ground up for beginners.